Uh, hello, 11 standard people. Uh, today we shall try to learn English and we will be concentrating on the third chapter of English as a first language. This is the third chapter from the book Horn Bill. And today in this session, I am aiming to wrap up the chapter. But we would be studying everything what is there in the chapter. That is, we shall be going point to point, sentences by sentences, or sentence by sentence. So without wasting any time, let's just start. Now the name of the chapter is Discovering Tut. The saga continues and is written by A.R. Williams. Remember, you have to remember the name of the chapter and you have to remember the name of the author too. It's a mandatory thing because these things you would be writing while answering the questions. Now, it's a very, very interesting chapter. Now, let me tell you something about the tut. Now, actually, it's a king, okay? That's the name of the king. Uh, he has a big name, actually. So, this is just the first syllable of his name. Now, before I explain you about all these things, tut and what does these words mean, I, I would explain you everything, but let's just remember for now just remember that okay the a r williams he is the author of our chapter so now let me explain you now discovering tut now the tut he was a king and firstly we would be in a country called egypt okay to understand this chapter and we are quite familiar about this country that is Egypt and you might be aware about this thing that Egypt is well known all over the globe because of the mummies that are found or that are found in the in the sand okay the pyramid the sphinx you might be aware about all those things which are there in Egypt so this tut he was a teenager king and there were archaeologists who found out the burial chamber of this king and along with this king they had found many different kind of things that we would be learning in this chapter and even gold solid gold was found Actually, he was buried in a gold coffin, okay? The coffin was made up of gold. So, all those things we will be learning in this chapter. Apart from this, it is also written, you can clearly see that the saga continues. Now, the word saga, you might be familiar with the game that is quite famous, which might be installed in your cell phone, that is the Candy Crush Saga. Now the word saga is, it's a never ending, whatever maybe, it's a never ending thing. It goes on and on and on. That is the meaning of the word saga. That is the reason here we have named the chapter as the saga continues. Because the mysteries behind the mummies, it is still a mystery. And we as a human being, we are trying to find that mystery. That what is it? how, when, who were those people and still there are many questions okay in this part okay that is uh, Egyptologist those people they try to get the answers of the question okay they try to solve the mystery now let us see what's there in the chapter he was just a teenager when he died the last heir of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. He was laid to rest laden with gold and eventually forgotten. Since the discovery of his tomb in 1922, the modern world has speculated about what happened to him. 
with murder being the most extreme possibility. Now leaving his tomb for the first time in almost 80 years, the touch of her undergone a CT scan that offers new clues about his life and death and provides precise data for an accurate forensic reconstruction of the boyish pharaoh. Okay, so this is the description. Now the word pharaoh is used for the king. Okay, now it is clearly written that he was uh, just a teenager and he was the king of the Egypt. Okay, he was just a teenager, but or however he was the king of the Egypt now his real name is Tutankhamun that is his real name that we it would come when we just read the chapter so the word Tutankhamun would be quite an aggressive word to pronounce so that's the reason we just use the first syllable of his name Tut okay so that's how we would be calling it and for your information you can clearly see the picture in the textbook now the picture that is made that is with the help of forensic science okay those people they scan the mummy and they develop the face it's not a guarantee that he was looking exactly like that okay it is just a, an estimation by a machine okay just remember that and the CT scan his mummy the touch mummy was the first mummy ever in the history that had undergone the CT scan okay that had undergone the CT scan so he was the first person now let me tell you the meaning of the word mummy now mummy is what mummy they are the remains of the human being they are the remains of the human being when they had died so those people out there they had wrapped up the body in a linen fabric that is a white fabric you might be quite familiar with that okay so the fabric the type of fabric is linen the type of fabric is is linen okay so they used to wrap up the body and put it in the coffin okay and apart from it they might be adding something too and that is the reason why mummies they last so long it means they were trying to preserve the corpse of a human being okay so that is how those people were believing in ancient time okay particularly in egypt they were believing in afterlife yes, there is so much in that there are so many theories and let us see okay now an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as King Tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient Egyptian cemetery known as the Valley of the Kings. Yes, look at the Valley of the Kings. If you see the Egypt map, then you can see the see this place written Valley of the Kings. It means in that area. Okay. They had found many mummies and they have named that place as the valleys or a valley of the kings okay pharaohs so pharaohs were the king okay so whenever you see the word pharaoh it means that they are talking about the king dark bellied clouds had scudded across the desert sky all day and now were waving the stars in casket gray it was 6 p.m on 5th of january 2005 the world's most famous mummy glided head first into a city scanner brought here to probe the lingering medical mysteries of this little understood young ruler who died more than 3300 years ago as i told you is the first mummy okay that had undergone the ct scan process when with the help of that they can reconstruct the face using forensic science okay and it was this date okay the archaeologist his name actually there was this archaeologist called carter an english person a british person he was the first person who had seen this okay and you would be knowing more once we read the chapter and 
so it was this date okay 5th of january 2005 so it's almost like uh, more than 15 years ago they had done this process all afternoon the usual time of tourists from around the world had descended into the cramped rock cut tomb some 26 feet underground to pay their respects yes his remains or his mummy was found underground okay there was this person who had found her okay and it was 26 feet under the ground they gazed at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber and peered at Tut's glide face. The most striking feature of this mummy-shaped outer coffin lid. Some visitors read from guidebooks in a whisper. Others stood silently, perhaps pondering Tut's untimely death in his late teens, or wondering with a shiver if the pharaoh's curse, death or misfortune falling, upon those who disturbed him was really true so these kind of things are there the murals means whatever is written on the wall okay like if some person is dead if you want to show the respect and people write something on the board that that is the mural that is all those things murals were found in his burial chamber okay they were everywhere where he was resting in peace okay so if all people were there so each and every people would be thinking differently because everybody has different minds so they would be telling what they feel someone might be thinking it's a curse or someone might think do not touch that or do not open that otherwise something very bad or worst would happen okay so that is what they are trying to convey in this paragraph now let us move forward okay it's a quite interesting chapter and if you flip the pages of your textbook then on page number 24 that is on the you can clearly see the map of Egypt okay you can see the well-known place out there is a Cairo okay Cairo is the capital city of Egypt and the currency of Egypt is Egyptian pounds okay there you can clearly see the valley of the kings okay and we have valley of the queens too correct you can clearly see it okay egypt map you can clearly see it's in africa continent okay so it's a quite a it's a quite an interesting chapter okay so let us move forward The mummy is in a very bad condition because of what Carter did in 1920s, said Zahi Hawass, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, as he leaned over the body for a long first look. Now for, your, for your information, Zahi Hawass is still working out there, okay? He's the person that takes care of all this department, okay? Mummies and all those things. He's the head out there in Egypt, okay? And his name is Zai Hawass. You can clearly see that the mummy was in a very bad condition because of one person called Carter. Okay, he was the first one who had found out, okay? But he was not able to open the lid of the coffin. Okay, so because of that, he had left the mummy wherever it was. And now you know that. Nowadays in Egypt, it's just a desert out there, okay? Very hot. So if a mummy is kept in such a place, you know, very hot temperature, okay. So as a result, the mummy spoils, okay. So to do the different analysis, okay, so it would be quite tough. So that is what Zahi Hawass is expressing here. Howard Carter, that is, was the British archaeologist who in 1922 discovered Tut's tomb after years of futile searching. It, its contents, though hastily ransacked in antiquity, were surprisingly complete. They remain the richest royal collection ever found and have become part of the pharaoh's legend. 
stunning artifacts in gold, their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection, caused a sensation at the time of the discovery and still get the most attention. But Tut was also buried with everyday things he had want in the afterlife. Board games, a bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine. Now, as I told you earlier, now in his burial chamber there were many things apart from his coffin. Uh, means coffin, he was resting in peace in the coffin, but apart from that, there were many different things out there. First, many things were of gold. Okay, as I told you, those people, they believe in resurrection, they believe in the afterlife. So, they were thinking at that time that in afterlife, they would be needing some undergarments, they would be needed their time to pass. So, that is the reason they might be playing games, okay. Even to shave, there was a razor blade too. Okay, everything was there, even the board game was there, so everything they found and these kind of things is like a royal, okay, it's very royal, it's definitely, this suggests that he was really a king, okay, that's the reason so many golden things were found. And for your information, if any person finds any of these things, okay, then those things, they go to the Cairo Museum, okay. Those people, they cannot take, take all the gold with them and they go home with the gold, okay. They cannot do that, okay. They have to deposit everything at Cairo's museum, okay. So these kind, there are some certain rules, okay. Yeah, it's like we cannot do whatever we like. Okay, and even the food was there, you can clearly see cases of food and even to drink wine, even wine was there, so everything was there in his burial chamber. After months of careful recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures, Carter began investigation his three nested coffins. Opening the first, he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves wild celery, lotus petals and corn flowers, the faded evidence of a burial in March or April. So these were all the evidence they had found and from that they can conclude that his body might be buried in the month of March or April. When he finally reached the mummy, though he ran into trouble, the ritual resins had hardened, cementing Tut to the bottom of his solid gold coffin. No amount of legitimate force could move them, Carter wrote later, what was to be done. As I told you earlier, this Carter was not able to open the lid of the box, okay, where the King Tut was resting. He was not able to open his coffin. Okay, it was, you can clearly see that it was made up of solid gold, okay was made up of solid gold he was really the king okay so Carter was not able to open it now let's see what happens the sun can beat down like a hammer this far south in Egypt and Carter tried to use it to loosen the resins for several hours he set the mummy outside in the blazing sunshine that heated it to 149 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, here, as I explained you earlier, the same thing is there, okay? So the mummy was right underneath the sun. And what was the temperature out there? 149 degree Fahrenheit. It means if you convert it into degree Celsius, the temperature is close to 60 degree centigrade, okay? That's very hot. Now I hope you would be able to imagine what is 60 degree okay here it's they have written in Fahrenheit nothing botched he reported with scientific detachment that the consolidated material had to be chiseled away from beneath the limbs and trunk before it was possible to raise the king's remains he was not able to open it so he is even trying to chisel away so that he would be able to open the lead 
In his defense, Carter really had little choice. If he hadn't cut the mummy free, thieves most certainly would have circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold. Okay, means thieves means circumvented means without knowing the guards. You know, at that time, you know, during in Egypt, you know, the thieves, it was a major problem. Okay, so they would be aware that any of a royal person has died so they were quite aware at that time that if a royal person dies then they would be even bearing the gold with it okay so they would be definitely trying to steal those gold things away okay so that's the reason they have mentioned about thieves in Todd's time, the royals were fabulously wealthy and they thought or hoped they could take their riches with them. For his journey to the great beyond, King Todd was lavished with glittering goods, precise collars, inlaid necklaces and bracelets, rings, amulets, a ceremonial apron, sandals, sheets for his fingers and toes, and now iconic inner coffin and mask all of pure gold you can imagine everything they were made up of pure gold okay and they were really wealthy now to separate touch from his adornments carter's men removed the mummy's head and seared nearly every major joint Okay, so now you see that somehow, in some way, this carter might had chiseled away the coffin and he was able to open the lid. As a result, the mummy, they were able to visualize, as it was clearly mentioned about chiseling away. So now they have certainly, they have opened it. They had opened it now you can clearly see that you see the carter's men removed the mummy's head and severed nearly every major joint it means they do not know how to handle the mummy okay then it means you see if you handle it it in a rough way so the it would break the mummy would break the bones okay it would be like a chalk, you know, like a brittle. You have to take care if you handle the mummy. You cannot apply too much force. So that's the reason, you see. Once they had finished, they reassembled the remains on a layer of a sand in a wooden box with padding that concealed the damage the bed where Tut now rests. So I see they are just spoiling away everything, okay, because of all these things. Uh, they would not be getting the clean medical report or analysis okay there would be some certain problem so in short this carter had spoiled away spoiled the things up okay for future analysis archaeology has changed substantially in the intervening decades focusing less on treasure and more on the fascinating details of life and intriguing mysteries of death it also uses more sophisticated tools, including medical technology. In 1968, more than 40 years after Carter's discovery, an anatomy professor x-rayed the mummy and revealed a startling fact. Beneath the resin that cakes his chest, his breastbone and front ribs are missing. So after Carter did everything, and after all such years had passed, you know, after Carter, so we had done quite a bit of advancement in medical science. So there was this one person who had done the scanning of the mummy. So from that he found out that his front ribs and bones are missing. Now who knows the cart because of the carter's thing, all those things might have buried in the sand. Who knows? We don't know. It is still a mystery. But it is just found out that all those things are missing. 
Now today diagnostic imaging can be done with computed tomography or CT by which hundreds of x-rays in cross section are put together like slices of bread to create a three dimensional virtual body. What more would a CT scan reveal of touch than the x-ray and could it answer two of the biggest questions still lingering about him how did he die and how old was he at the time of his death. You know that is still a big mystery like what was his death and what was the cause of the death now the different theories they reveal different things okay as it is was mentioned during the introduction of the chapter that he was a teenager it means his age might be around 15 or 16 okay and someone might have murdered him or he might had a disease who knows we don't know but there are different theories and they support their own respective answers. Today diagnostic imaging can be done with computed tomography. Yes, now you see by which hundreds of x-rays in cross section are put together like slices of bread to create a three-dimensional virtual body. As I would explained you, you know, like the beginning of the chapter, when the chapter starts, there is a picture of this king. Now that's a picture that is created by the software okay using a 3d three-dimensional scanning and actually they are dots and they connect all those dots okay so the software would do everything for them and this is the final result what we can see that is printed on the page now king Tut's demise was a big event even by royal standards he was the last of his family's line and his funeral was the death rattle of a dynasty but the particulars of his passing away and its aftermath are unclear. See, remember, whatever we try to learn in Egypt or about mummies, at the end of everything, there would be certainly a question mark, okay? Like mystery. Like we don't know because we people were not there at that time. Now let us move forward. Now, Amitok, third, third's father or grandfather. We don't know. Okay, and even to get the DNA from these kind of mummies is not an easy thing, okay? If they are lucky, they would be able to find DNA. Now, this person, I mean, uh, third one, now he was either a father or grandfather of time. Now, he was a powerful pharaoh who ruled for almost four decades at the height of the 18th dynasty's golden age. His son, Amihotep IV succeeded him and initiated one of the strangest pe periods in the history of the ancient Egypt. The new pharaoh promoted the worship of the Aten. The sun disk changed his name to Akhenaten or servant of the Aten and moved the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akhetaten. Now you see this, he's doing some serious thing, okay, this is the fourth guy, he's doing some serious thing, he's changing his name, he's moving the capital city. Imagine, like what happens if India suddenly changes the capital, like our capital city is Delhi, correct? Now imagine if that is changed, so some of the major changes this fourth guy had done at that time. Okay. Now he even changed his name, okay, as it is clearly written, and moved the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akitate, known as San Amarna. He further shocked the country by attacking Amun, a major god, smashing his images and closing his temples. It must have been a horrific time, said Ray Johnson, director of the University of Chicago Research Center in Luxor the site of ancient Thebes. The family that had ruled for centuries was coming to an end and then Akhenaten went a little wacky. You can clearly see that, you know, like since four decades there were ruling, things are changing. So that time period would be definitely a horrific or a, you can use the word terrible, okay? All these kind of dangerous things are happening after his death a mysterious ruler named smenkar 
appeared briefly and excited with hardly a trace. Hmm. So after this, another ruler had came, but sadly we do not have enough data about him. After then, a very young Tutankhaten took the throne. That is our King Tut. That is our King Tut. King Tut, as he is widely known today, the boy King Shun changed his name to Tutankhamun, as I told you. First, his name was Tutankhaten, and from that, he had changed his name to Tutankhamun, and we just used the first syllable of his second name. Living image of Amun and oversaw a restoration of the old ways. He reigned for about nine years and then died unexpectedly. Now you can see that this Amihotep fourth, he had done a severe damage. Okay, he had destroyed all the temples of Amun and all those things. So this guy, King Tut, now he was restoring everything. So whatever that guy had destroyed, he is constructing all those things and you can clearly see that they have printed that he was ruling since last nine years so you can imagine at what age he might have become a king okay so this is very interesting but unfortunately he died regardless of his fame and the spectacle speculations about his faith Tut is one mummy among many in Egypt how many no one knows as I told you many things are mystery the Egyptian mummy project which began an inventory in late 2003 has recorded almost 600 so far and it is still counting the next phase scanning the mummies with a portable CT machine donated by the National Geographic Society and Simmons its manufacturer King Tut is one of the first mummies to be scanned in death as in life, moving regally ahead of his countrymen. As I told you before that, his mummy is the first mummy that we people had done the CT scan and the machines that were made, that were made up by a very good company called Siemens. Okay now we would be trying to get the data of the ct scan okay let us move forward there. the ct scan scan the mummy head to toe creating 1700 digital x-ray images in cross section touch head scan in 0.62 millimeter slices to register into intricate structures takes on every detail in the resulting image every details means take even the minute details any important details that is called early details okay that's a very good word you can use these kind of words when writing an essay so in short because of this technology they can reconstruct the face that we are seeing which is printed in the first page with Tut's entire body similarly recorded, a team of specialists in radiology, forensics, and anatomy began to probe the secrets that the winged goddesses or a guarded burial shrine protected for so long. And you can see, you can treat these, you know, goddesses, winged goddesses, you can think like an angel. An angel, even an angel, might be protecting King Tut because all those things, I think, they were found. In his burial chamber so you can just understand by the word angel okay it would be very easy for you okay you would be able to remember easily the night of the scan workmen carried touch from the tomb in his box now you see from now on whatever would be coming it would be giving us the details like how they had done the CT scan what were the difficulties there were finding when they were doing the CT scan okay so all those things would be coming from now on till the last statement the night of the scan workman carried tom carried tut from the tomb in his box yes where that is where he was resting so the worker would be coming out there and they would be taking care so they would be working with the plow like pole bearers they climbed a ramp and a fight of stairs into the swirling sand outside then rose on a hydraulic lift into the trailer that held the scanner 
25 minutes later, two men emerged, sprinted for an office nearby and returned with a plastic fans. Not just one, there are many, you know, it's clearly returned with a pair of white plastic fans. The million dollar scanner had quit because of sand in a cooler fan. Curse of a pharaoh, chopped a guard nervously. So now when they were doing all those things, when they were moving the mummy, at that time, the, our machine, the CT scanner, had stopped working. You know, at that time, what might be the problem I can make you to imagine. You know, as we know that Egypt is a desert, so there might be a wind blowing. And in the machine, there is a fan. Okay, the fan, fan that rotates. So in that particular fan, a sand might have gone inside it because of that those fans might have stopped working as a result the entire machine of ct scan had stopped working at that time so what they can do i think is they can replace those fans if they have any extras let's see if, if do they have or they don't let's just see and remember the price of this machine it was a million dollar okay it was a million dollar million means 10 to the power 6 if you if you want to convert it into indian currency right now its price money is like 7.5 crore okay so these machines are uh, very expensive okay because people they really want to know their mysterious things are so many things so majority of the people they are not much interested in treasures they just want to know the mystery as this kind of say, statement is clearly printed in one of the pages we just read it okay so one of the guards uh, okay told that oh, it's a curse of a pharaoh you know these kind of things happen Okay, so he just choked it okay you might be familiar with all these things eventually the substitute fans worked well enough to finish the procedure after checking that no data had been lost the technician turned tut over to the workman who carried him back to his tomb less than three hours after he was removed from his coffin the pharaoh again rested in peace where the funerary priest had laid him so long ago finally they had done the substitution of those fans and finally they were able to change those fans and they were able to complete the procedure of ct scanning of the first mummy ever that is our king tut finally the work was over back in the trailer a technician pulled up astonishing images of tut on a computer screen a gray head took shape from a scattering of pixels and the technician spun and tilted it in every direction now you see all these dots see the software that they are working with so when they would be doing the scanning they would be getting too many dots on the computer screen and these dots you can work with these dots in a 3d way okay in a 3d way means you can rotate them 360 degree you can even move them back move them front depending on it but these kind of softwares are usually 3d and this is how they reconstruct the face okay this is the procedure neck vertebrae appeared as clearly as in anatomy class okay so they can see everything clearly okay other images revealed a hand several views of the ribcage and a transaction of the skull but for now the pressure was off sitting back in his chair zai hawa smiled visibly relieved that nothing had gone seriously wrong now after all these things our hero that is the egyptian hero zai hawa as i told you earlier he is the person that takes care of this department okay archaeology department and he is the head out there so finally that person was very happy and he told that not to worry all the things are good or all the things were good and a procedure was done 
in a fabulous way so he's just relaxing in his chair that is what they are trying to convey here i didn't sleep last night not for a second he said i was so worried but now i think i will go and sleep so the Sai Havas, he was quite worried about the scanning results, like would they be able to do this procedure or not. So because of that tension, he was not able to sleep before the night. Okay, before an example, the all the things we're about to do tomorrow, like you can imagine, like there is a there is an exam tomorrow so i think there would be few students who would not be able to sleep others can sleep i am definitely aware about that so nothing to worry all right so in short zai Hawas, he is really concerned with all these things okay so finally he told that he can go to sleep he told to himself and afterwards you can see the clear pictures you see muriel in king tut's tomb showing king tut with oiris the god of the afterlife you see these are the murials you can see so many symbols you can see at the back so these people they were really believing in the afterlife okay all those things that is how their culture was now by the time we left the trailer descending metal stairs to the sandy ground the wind had stopped the winter air lay cold and still like death itself in this valley of the departed just above the entrance of the Tut's tomb stood orion the constellation that the ancient egyptian knew as the soul of osiris the god of the afterlife watching over the boy king okay so you see when these people were bearing all those things so these kind of people were really believing in astrology okay remember that these people had a nice interest in the field of astrology as it is clearly written okay constellation they were able to see the constellation right outside the king Tut's burial chamber so this is the end of our chapter that is discovering Tut the saga continue. I am aware that second chapter is pending in the upcoming video. I would be uploading the chapter number two. Make sure answer the questions. You have to answer it very well. Do not write it so long. I just want your answers. I need quality okay quantity we would be taking care about it later once we meet it but make sure what it is asked to you in the question write about that and before writing any answer make sure you write the introduction that is the name of the chapter and the name of the author all right so bye for now and stay tuned